thank you so much for being with us on All Angles. Before we go to our guest, Giovanni Dennis has this overview. The past week has been busy on the industrial relations scene. A strike by National Water Commission workers left Jamaicans without water for two days. Then, air traffic controllers took industrial action, leading to cancelled flights and grounded passengers. By Friday, public sector workers were threatening to strike and National Housing Trust workers walked off the job. Both Prime Minister Andrew Holness and Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark appealed for patience as the government carries out what the Finance Minister calls an unprecedented public sector workers' compensation review. The process has already tested the relative harmony in Jamaica's industrial relations just a few days before Labor Day on May 23. Labor Day marks the emergence of the formal labor movement in Jamaica. It began notably with the 1938 riots sparked by bad pay and harsh working conditions. One of the most important was the Froom riots. Kingston Dockers also went on strike and Alexander Bustamante addressed a massive crowd on May 23 from the statue of Queen Victoria in downtown Kingston. The statue stands in what we now call St. William Grant Park, named after another notable labor leader of the time. Jamaica's modern trade union and political movements were born from the 1938 upheaval, starting with the Bustamante Industrial Trade Union and the People's National Party. Other notable milestones in Jamaica's industrial disputes history include the 1975 passage of the Labor Relations and Industrial Disputes Act, which established the Industrial Disputes Tribunal and the 1976 Labor Relations Code. The Act was originally written to protect unionized workers and it wasn't until 2010 that it was amended to give non-unionized workers access to the IDT. In fact, in his sectoral presentation on April 26, Labour Minister Carl Samuda reported that of the 104 cases before the IDT in the last financial year, only 15 involved unionized workers while the vast majority, 89, involved non-unionized workers. As Labour Day 2022 approaches, public sector compensation is dominating headlines. But beneath the surface, there are other important issues. Important is the seeming relentless move towards contract work. Jamaica Civil Service Association President O'Neill Grant says contract work in the public sector limits collective bargaining and can leave workers on fixed term contracts for years with no route to permanent employment or benefits including a pension. In January, Labour leader and opposition Senator Lambert Brown, in his State of the Nation presentation, called for special legislation to protect contract workers. Labour lawyer Gavin Goff is also calling for legislative reform. He says the 1976 Labour Code needs updating as, quote, having a 44-year-old document still guiding us in our employee relations is just speechless. Giovanni Dennis for all angles. And joining us in this segment of the program, we have opposition Senator Floyd Morris. We have opposition MP Julian Robinson, who is also the party spokesperson on finance. And we have with us as well, industrial relations expert and senior lecturer at the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, Dr. Orville Taylor, obviously, of course, part of our family here at TBJ, as he is a host on Sister Station Radio Jamaica's hotline program. Gentlemen, thank you all so much for talking to us. We really appreciate it. Going to start with you, Dr. You. Taylor. We're yes. on the eve of Labor Day, which, of course, in Jamaica commemorates the, you might call it, the birth of the modern labor movement. What, having seen what we saw last week in terms of industrial action, what's your assessment of how we're doing? You know, um, history has a, is a great teacher. Oftentimes, though, um, our leaders don't necessarily listen. We have to... I constantly said, I've said this, we have two Labour parties in Parliament and they need to learn to learn from the historical lessons which have been, um, which have been taught over the years. Quite interesting, you know, Labour Day eventually, after all of those uprisings in the 1930s, became moved away from being Empire Day 
And by the time we got to the 1970s, it pretty much was about a celebrating of the workers and um, community involvement, etc. There is something very uncanny that resembles an occurrence of the 1980s. I see now firemen uh, have disciplinary action being taken against them, which is quite interesting because it happened coming out of the general strike of 1985. Um, and it had some serious, serious repercussions, which ultimately redound to the detriment, to the def detriment, to the detriment of the incumbent government. As a consequence of that, um, we saw a loss in the election. And believe it or not, one of the things that I would have uh, looked at over the years, over the years, is uh, an almost mapping of what looks like occupational detriment against the working classes in Jamaica and the relationship that that has, has with electoral outcomes later on. Tell me, sorry, so, tell me what you mean uh, by that. Looks, tell me what you mean by that, Dr. Taylor. Right. What I am saying to you is if you were to chronicle the way in which voters have voted since 1944, each time the government in power does things that looks like it, it's taking on the labor movement or it is taking on the media, it has almost always led to a loss in the general election afterwards. Having said that, though, uh, I don't think this is what the government is attempting to do. Um, I've had conversations with the finance minister, and my strong suspicion is that he's trying to do things which, in his opinion, is for the benefit of the nation. However, our, our democracy is built upon communication and consultation, and collective bargaining has been the backbone of our trade union movement, which has, of course, led to the formation and support of our political parties over the years. So therefore, in a nutshell, no matter what the policy is, and no matter what it looks like, it ultimately has to be bought into by the trade union movement, and that includes the public sector um, trade unions, and including the federation, which by law is not entitled and not allowed to call itself a trade union. So long and short of it is that there is much more space for consultation and communication, and the process of collective bargaining really needs to be um, that needs to be followed in, a, in, in, just, in simple terms. That's pretty much what I'm saying. I hope just, I make sense. Just, just before I go to the other two guests, though, is it your sense that the finance minister, through his national broadcast, his, his column that he wrote, as well as the meetings he's had, has managed to calm things down? Let's use that word. I don't know whether or not he has actually calmed things down. I think that he's attempting to do so, though. Um, the... There's a discussion as we speak that is taking place uh, place, taking place right now. Um, I don't necessarily want to say what it is or where it is, but it probably will come out. Um, that I, so I do know that there's a critical public sector group that is, at, is engaging. And so engagement is, is good. Engagement is something that is desirable. Engagement is critical to the collective bargaining process. What clearly seemed to have occurred over the last couple of weeks was a sort of top-down approach. That's what it looked like, where government said, listen, we have done our due diligence based on our opinion. We know what is good for you. And it really doesn't matter as to whether or not you think that a piece of Christmas cake is better than the bullet that the people are eating. The fact is, the people must be given an opportunity to reject that bullet that they were eating or to reject the, um, the Christmas cake. So because why 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 you say why you say why you say you're not you're not sure he's calmed things down? They're still arguing over bull and cake. I don't know. I'm just saying to you that the discussions that are taking place are outside the scrutiny of the media, and therefore, even if I were to know anything about it, I would not be privileged to speak. Okay, no problem. Let me just go to the other guests now because yeah. the opposition has been very vocal over the past week or so as well. And Senator Mars, let me come to you first of all. Same question to you. Does it appear to you that the finance minister has managed to stave off the worst of the industrial action or any more industrial action? We saw the Civil Service Association withdrawing its strike notice, for instance. Well, at least we have seen some sort of calm has uh, taken place thus far. Uh, 
We don't know what is taking place uh, behind the scenes, but at least we have been calling for uh, greater dialogue and consultations and for a greater release of information to the respective parties. And uh, I think that is what is happening now and contributing to the calm that we are seeing uh, in the labor market, especially as it relates to public sector workers. So are you satisfied with the process, as you're aware of it, uh, been taking place, the public sector compensation review process? Well, no, I'm, I'm not satisfied with what has uh, been taking place because I, I start from the point Leon, that we have a good thing going in terms of the uh, compensation, the reclassification that is uh, taking place, which is urgently needed uh, to make sure that our workers who have made tremendous sacrifice for the country over the years, that they are adequately uh, compensated. But in making um, this historic move, as the minister pointed out, you know, you're, you're changing age-old practices and uh, traditions. And you have to make sure that you bring all the parties uh, to, the, um, to the table and you consult, you dialogue, and you interact. Because you don't want, when you go into that stadium, you are, as the minister pointed out, you are running a leg, and there's nobody there to cheer you on. Instead, what you will have is individuals jeering you on, and you are going to be deflated. So it is best that at all times we consult and we dialogue, and the union and the workers and the, the respective stakeholders are critical to the process. This is a contractual process that they are engaged in. They have negotiated for years uh, certain benefits, and some of these benefits are going to be changed. It can't be arbitrarily done. It can't be unilaterally done. And that is something that the minister has to understand that these things have to be done through the collective bargaining process. Let me bring in Julian Robinson here because one of the concerns always is that a party in opposition seems to always go for very populist policies, uh, Mr. Robinson, and for populist me th read um, fiscally irresponsible, and that therefore, how, how does the PNP then in calling for, sure, better communication, but are, are you satisfied with other aspects of how the, the process has been going on? Absolutely not. I mean, I'd say, first of all, I want to separate the process from the objectives. We agree with the objectives of simplifying the public sector compensation um, system from over 300 salary scales to 16. So we agree with that. But the process has been flawed. If you use the minister's analogy, he has been running a marathon. He has run 26 of the 26.2 miles. He's getting into the stadium to the one lap, to the, to, the, to the finish line. But he has been running on his own. Nobody knows what has happened over the last two to three years when these consultants have been working to design this new system. Nobody has been involved in that process. So he's saying he's, at the, he's close to the finish line, but he's close to the finish line on his own. He has not brought the critical stakeholders with him. The, the first time that critical consultations and discussions started were a couple months ago, right? A couple months ago. In fact, months may have been plural. It may have been um, in March, April, where details were provided. So what you have, you have groups that are complaining that they do not know the details of what the changes are going to be. While the minister said nobody's going to be worse off, people can't take that assurance. People oh. want to see what their net pay will be Hold when it thought. is worked out. Hold that thought for me, Mr. Robinson. Let's just go to the break, do a little bit of business. Remember our hashtag, it's TBJ All Angles, and we come back. Stay with us.